I said this earlier in this hard module that percentages are notoriously tricky. And the reason is that the wording of percentages on the SAT especially is very counterintuitive and weird and, and just our brain has trouble with it. So when in doubt, we use the open formula to help us. Now, uh, in this case, because it's talking about a percent change, percent greater, we're gonna use the version of the open formula that involves the one plus or minus P. So the O still stands for the original value, the P stands for the percentage, the N stands for the new value, but the one plus or minus helps us with the fact that it's a percent greater that we're interested in. So let's start with just kind of what we have here. The value of Z is what percent greater than 100? So Z is kind of like our new, because 100 is like the base. That's the thing we're starting with, and then we want to know how much greater we are when we have Z. So 100 is going to go in here. We also know that it's going to be 1 plus because it says percent greater. So just follow the, the story here. And that also helps us put the 100 in the right spot because we don't, we don't want to reverse it. Percentages are not reversible. If it says percent greater in the question, we're going to have a 1 plus in our formula. So just stick with that. And then we know that Z is greater. So we should probably have our Z over here on the new side. And then the P is what we're going to solve for, right? Because that's, that's kind of what they're asking. But we can't have two variables in an equation. So obviously, we need to get rid of one of these. And weirdly, they tell us the value of Z, but they do it in this like really strange way, right? They're saying Z is 1.13 times 100, which you don't even need a calculator for this. That's just 113. Why do that? There's really no reason. Why not just say Z is 113? Well, they know they're going to confuse you, or at least confuse some people. So I, I guess that's literally the only reason to do it. Otherwise, I don't know. That just seems really easy uh, to do, but I don't know. The wording is strange. That's The SAT loves that. They just love to mess with the wording. So now, though, we have all the pieces we need. We can solve for um, P just by going through the normal steps of algebra. Let's divide both sides by 100. We could also multiply it in, but I'm going to do the, the division. So that's 1 plus P. Actually, let's get rid of those parentheses now. 1 plus P is equal to, well, yeah, 1.13, right? I mean, we could use the calculator again, but we we just divide, we just multiplied 1.13 by 100. So if we divide by 100, we're going to get back to 1.13. And, and maybe this is where it comes down to like, they're hoping you get confused by all that. Um, now, though, we got to make sure that we actually solve for P. So we have to subtract one from both sides and we get P is 0 0.13. Now, that's not an answer because remember, the percentage in this formula is expressed as a decimal. Pretty much every time we work with percentages in math, we use a decimal version. So we have to convert this back. And that means that 0.13 is really 13%. That is what we've been asked. And that is the answer here. So it's weird. It, the math here is not so bad. I like the formula because it kind of keeps us centered and grounded and we, we're just kind of thinking, all right, let me find this value, this value, plug in, whatever it is, and then algebra does the rest. Um, I'm just always nervous about percentage questions because as you can see from the wording of this one, the SAT is just like sneaky with them. And so just be on guard, play a tight defense, whatever that means for you, showing work, using formulas, percentage questions, you should really be nervous that they're trying to mess with you because they're trying to mess with you.